The Goose Girl Story. Once upon a time, the king of a great land passed away, and left his queen and their daughter behind. And there was a good fairy too, who was fond of the princess and helped her mother to watch over her. When she grew up, she was betrothed to a prince who lived a great way off. And as the time grew near for her to be married, she got ready to set off on her journey to his country. The mother packed all the jewels and royal garments for her daughter. My dear child, now take these jewels and precious stones with you, and be happy with your prince. And she gave her a waiting maid to ride with her, and gave her into the bridegroom's hands. And each had a horse for the journey. <laughs> now the princess's horse was the fairy's gift, and it was called Falada and could speak. Oh wait! I have something else for you. The fairy took a pair of scissors and cut a lock of her hair. Take care of it, dear child, for it is the charm that may be of use to you on the road. The princess said her goodbyes to her mother and fairy godmother, and left with her maid and her horse Falada. After many hours of traveling, the princess was thirsty. And said to her maid, "Pray fetch me some water, dear maid. If you are thirsty, my dear princess, get off your horse yourself and lie down and drink out the water. I am not your servant." The shocked princess got off her horse. She bent down over the water in the stream and drank. Suddenly, the magical lock of hair said, "Poor princess! If only your mother knew." Her heart would break, but the king's daughter was humble, said nothing, and mounted her horse again. After more hours of traveling, she was thirsty once more, and when they came to a stream of water, she said to her maid, "Pray fetch me some water, dear maid. As I said, get it yourself." Again, the princess got off her horse. She bent down over the water in the stream and drank. Then the lock of hair said, "If only your mother knew, her heart would break. The maid is not obedient. But be careful, princess. Don't bend so much. Oh, I am falling into the river." The lock of hair fell out of her pocket and floated away with the water. Then the maid said, "Ha ha ha." Now you are weak and powerless. From now on, I give the orders, and you must obey me. Now take off your dress and give it to me, and you will wear mine. I am now the princess, and if you tell anybody about this, you will regret it. The maid wore the princess's dress and mounted her horse Falada, and the true bride rode the bad horse. Finally, they arrived at the royal palace. The prince went to meet them and took the maid as his would-be bride. Welcome to the palace, my dear princess. I am so happy to be here. Who is this girl? She's my maid. She is my companion, but I don't like her. I was wondering,、uh, prince, if you have some work for her. Well, I don't have any work for her, but. I have a little boy named Curdkin, who could take care of the geese. She may help him. Oh, and Prince, I need another favor. Please get rid of the horse on which I rode here. I almost fell on the road because of him. In fact, the maid knows that Falada, the horse, can speak, and it might tell how she behaved with the real princess. She carried her point. And the faithful Falada was killed. But when the true princess heard of it, she wept and begged the man to nail up Falada's head against a large dark gate of the city, through which she had to pass every morning and evening, that there she might still see him sometimes. As you wish, dear. And he nailed the head up under the dark gate. 
Early the next morning, as she and Kurdkin went out through the gate, she said sorrowfully, Falada, Falada, there thou hangest. Bride, bride, there thou gangest. Alas, alas, if thy mother knew it, sadly, sadly, she would rue it. Then they went out of the city and drove the geese on. And when she came to the meadow, she sat down upon a bank there and let down her waving locks of hair, which were all of pure silver. And when Kurdkin saw it glitter in the sun, he ran up and would have pulled some of her locks out. But she cried, Blow, breezes, blow, let Kurdkin's hat go. Blow, breezes, blow, let him after it go. O'er hills, dales, and rocks, away be it whirled, till the silvery locks all are combed and curled. Then there came a wind so strong that it blew off Kurdkin's hat, and away it flew over the hills, and he was forced to turn and run after it. By the time he came back, she had done combing and curling her hair, and had put it up again safely. Then he was very angry and sulky, and would not speak to her at all. They watched the geese until it grew dark in the evening, and then drove them homewards. The same thing repeated for two days, and one evening, Kurdkin went to the old king complaining, I cannot have that strange girl to help me to keep the geese any longer. Instead of doing any good, she does nothing but tease me all day long. Kurdkin, I know you are not telling the entire story. Yell me what happened, or... Then the king made him tell him what had happened, and Kurdkin went on telling the king what had happened. Hmm, you carry on with your work. I'll look into the matter. When morning came, the king placed himself behind the dark gate and heard how the princess spoke to Falada and how Falada answered. Then he went into the field and hid himself in a bush by the meadow side. And he soon saw with his own eyes how she let down her hair that glittered in the sun. And then he heard her say, Blow, breezes, blow, let Kurdkin's hat go. Blow, breezes, blow, let him after it go. Over hills, dales, and rocks, away be it whirled, till the silvery locks are all combed and curled. And soon came a gale of wind and carried away Kurdkin's hat. And away went Kurdkin after it, while the girl went on combing and curling her hair. All this time the old king saw, so he went home without being seen. And when the little goose girl came back in the evening, the king called her aside and asked her why she did this so. But she burst into tears. That I must not tell you or any man, or I shall lose my life. But the old king begged so hard that she had no peace till she had told him all the tale, from beginning to end, word for word. And it was very lucky for her that she did so. No harm shall come upon you, dear princess. I will right the wrong done to you. Now I want you to get dressed as the princess would. When she did, he gazed on her with wonder. She was so beautiful. Then he called his son and told him that he had only a false bride, for that she was merely a waiting maid while the true bride stood by. She is your true bride, my son. Then I must be very lucky, father. And the young prince rejoiced when he saw her beauty and heard how meek and patient she had been. And without saying anything to the false bride, the king ordered a great feast to be got ready for all his court. Tonight we celebrate the truth and punish the lie. The bridegroom sat at the top with the false princess on one side and the true one on the other. But nobody knew her again, 
for her beauty was quite dazzling to their eyes. And she did not seem at all like the little goose girl now that she had her brilliant dress on. How dare she! When they had eaten and drunk and were very merry, the old king stood up asking for attention. Tonight I tell you all a tale. Listen to me carefully. So he began and told all the story of the princess as if it was the one that he once heard. And he asked the true waiting maid what she thought ought to be done to anyone who would behave thus. What would you do with such a liar? Nothing better. She should be thrown in the jail forever. Thou art she, and as thou hast judged thyself, so shall it be done to thee. The maid was punished as per her own words, and the young king was then married to his true wife, and they reigned over the kingdom in peace and happiness all their lives. And the good fairy came to see them and restored the faithful Falada to life again.